I want to show you how to use Scenario Manager in Excel and I'm going to illustrate it with a capital budgeting example. So normally when we do capital budgeting, at least when you first learn it, we just give you some cash flows, we give you the cost of capital, and you calculate NPV and IRR, etc. But in reality, those cash flow numbers come from somewhere. So we're going to keep the example really simple here. The cash flows come from a simple pro forma income statement here where you estimate sales, variable costs, fixed costs, depreciation. You work through um, the pro forma income statement to get the cash flows. So here we're going to have some actual numbers. Rather than just give you a cash flow, we're going to have some estimates. So we think that we have this base case. We think we'll probably sell 6,000 units at a price of $80. We think the variable cost per unit will be $60 per unit, the fixed cost $40,000 a year, and the cost of capital will be 14%. But we also have some lower and upper bounds. Now keep in mind that these lower and upper bounds don't represent the best case and the worst case scenario because lower numbers for some values are good, higher numbers are good for other cases. So in the case of the lower values for units sold and price per unit, that's bad. But a lower variable cost per unit, a lower uh, fixed cost per year, and a lower cost of capital are actually good. And then we have some upper bound numbers as well. So let's work out some three different cases. The base case, the worst case and the best case scenario and we'll see how that impacts NPV and IRR. So how do we create this pro forma? Well we need some assumptions here. So the initial investment is 200,000. The life of the project is five years and we're going to assume zero salvage value. We're going to use straight line depreciation to keep it really simple and to calculate the straight line depreciation each year it's the initial investment minus the salvage value, which in this case is zero, divided by the life of the project, which is five, so 40,000 a year. And we're gonna assume a tax rate of 25%. So here, the sales, and I put in values here of C3 times C4, right? So the number of units sold times the price per unit is our sales, our variable cost will be the number of units times the variable cost per unit, the fixed cost, etc. So I put in these values and if I subtract these costs from the sales revenue, I get earnings before interest and taxes. I sort of don't like that. They're all 40,000, which makes it a little bit confusing. But um, we subtract out the taxes, which is 25% of the 40,000, 10,000. We get net income of 30,000 we add back in the depreciation of 40,000. We do that because depreciation is a non-cash expense. You have to subtract it out to get the correct taxes paid, but you don't actually pay anybody the num number, so we add that back in because it doesn't impact cash flow. So we have $70,000 a year in cash flow. And we could have a more complicated problem where we have different cash flows each year that we have uh, cash flows growing or sales growing each year by some percentage or um, we can have a different depreciation method such as the MACRS method which gives you different values each year but here we're going to keep it really simple so you're going to have 70,000 a year in cash flows and we're going to calculate NPV NPV is going to be equal to the present value of these cash flows minus the cost. We can use the NPV function, but we have to be wary that the NPV function in Excel doesn't actually calculate NPV. It calculates the present value of the cash flows. It starts discounting the first cash flow. So you're going to put in NPV, you're going to put in the cost of capital, which is in C7, and you're going to put in these cash flows right here and then you're going to subtract out the cost, and we get 40316 And then we can calculate IRR. We can use the IRR function, and here we can just use equals IRR and 
highlight all these values. So, so we have our first base case. So how can we do this? Well, we can go to the data tab and what else, uh, what if, and we go to scenario manager. Let's add a scenario. So we're going to call this the base case and we're going to do this by changing these values. And we're just going to say OK. So I'm just going to leave those values in there. That's OK. That's our first case. Our second case, let's do the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is going to be the case where we have the lowest units sold, 5,500. We're going to have the lowest price, which is 75. We're going to have the highest variable cost, here 62. The highest fixed cost of 45,000 and the highest cost of capital. And let's say OK. And then we can highlight that and say show. And you'll see that these values will change. And here, in this case, in the worst case scenario, we get a big negative net, P, net present value number and we have a negative internal rate of return. Okay, and let's add one more case. We'll add the best case scenario. So we're going to say add best and we're going to say OK and so here we're going to say we sell 6500 we're selling the most we're selling at the highest price of 85 we're going to have the lowest variable cost of 58 the lowest fixed cost of 35,000 and the lowest cost of capital of 13% and let's say OK and let's see what the best case looks like and we're going to show that and here you can see that it's uh, a very high positive NPV value and a very high IRR of over 50% so again we can look back if we want to see what the worst case looks like show the base case so this is a really easy way to do this to look at these different situations or scenarios using the scenario function in Excel. So it adds a little more realism. It allows us to look at different cases with highest prices and lowest prices and highest amount sold, higher cost of capital, etc. So this is a good way to test whether that project or not is robust to different um, scenarios.